folks, it's Bill Swift, and thank you for tuning in to our 2023 product unveiling. And it is winter up here in Muskoka. It's absolutely beautiful. But it's nice inside, and we have a beautiful collection of boats to show you guys. So I think we should go inside and have some fun. And Joe, let's just uh, scan down the porch right here. We'll show people we've got a bunch of extra boats out here, too, that we're going to be moving in and out of the show. Some lovely, lovely vessels. What a beautiful day to show off a collection of boats. Ooh la la, folks. How would you like to have a barn full of boats like this? So, Joe, let's give a quick tour around here. We've got beautiful tandem canoes. We've got our combis. And then over this way, we've got a beautiful collection of pack boats. We have our solo canoes, and we have a great selection of kayaks as well. We're not leaving kayaks out of this. And over here, we have Matt Steffler, and Matt is going to be helping us today with all the technical information. He is the mastermind behind many of the new looks and finishes you're going to see. And many of you are probably familiar with Scott. He's going to be here. He is tuned in live to you. And one of the things we want you guys to let us know, where are you from? Message into Scott. Where, where are you tuning in from? We'd love to give a shout out to some folks today. We're also going to be giving away some Swift swag. Shirts, sweatshirts, hats. We've got these really cool water bottles as well. And we have a couple contests we're going to do, or I shouldn't say contests, or questions we're going to ask you, and we're going to choose some winners based upon that. So we also have some other folks. This is Diane McDonald. She is the manager of our Muskoka store here. And this is Brandon Arnold. He is the manager of a bunch of things. And they are going to be live today also. If anyone has questions that they want answered right away, they can call us right now at our 800 number. And Brandon and Diane are going to be on the phones. We're also going to be, for the next month, the month of February, our showroom is going to be set up just like this. So if any folks in Ontario want to come visit our store, call Brandon and Diane, book an appointment, and we can give you a private showing of the beautiful boats here. If you're calling from far away, whether you be, have a dealer that you work with or you are a direct shipment customer, Call us also. We're happy to have a private consult with you on the phone, and it's always best if you call ahead and we book something with you. Fun. Let's start, Joe. Let's start showing people these beautiful boats. I'm pretty pumped about all this. Uh, Matt and his team have created some beauties this year. Matt, let's put this one off to the side right now. Sounds good. We jumped the gun a little bit with this baby. Matt brought a surprise boat for us today. He that type of guy <laughs> does that quite often. So let's start. We're going to show you our tandem canoes. And we're going to start out with the Prospector 15 in Expedition Carbon, which has our black carbon cloth on the outside. It's got our beautiful basalt and negra commingle on the inside. Many, there's other layers and pieces in this. And Matt, this laminate's so cool. And what do you think about this Expedition Carbon laminate? I love the Expedition Carbon. Uh, I personally have a Cruiser 14.8 with the Expedition Carbon. And um, it, it's, it's great. You're getting the lightweight of the carbon fiber, but you're getting that extra durability that you would expect from our Expedition Series laminates. So, uh, yeah, it's just, they're just beautiful boats, and they just look amazing and natural in the interior. I love it so much. So let's talk quickly here, just the Expedition Carbon. Some people think, oh, I'm, it, can you whitewater river trip with this laminate? And guys, this is the hardest question we get from everybody. And it's not pertaining most to the laminate. It pertains to you and what type of paddler you are. You can definitely run over rocks. You can run over logs. This particular boat has Kevlar skid plates on the end, which you can really go ramming speed into things. Scott, are people hearing okay? We're good. Awesome. Now, this particular customer also ordered it with the 
aqua blue sticker color. So we do some things like this from time to time if you have a particular request. Many folks also get custom graphics, some decals on the outside of the boat. So Matt, let's put this boat down on the side and let's bring down our next baby. Okay. Look at this, folks. Look at the trim on this vessel. This is our cherry trim, which is beautiful. There's scuppers on the ends. All the interior's cherry, put in with stainless steel hardware. We put scuppers near the middle. Matt, how many cherry trims would you say we do a year? Um, we don't do too many. Uh, Terry does all of our wood trims at the factory. He does an amazing job of doing them. They're, every boat is a work of art that he does. So uh, I'd say we probably do maybe 50 to 100 a year, I would say. Now, this particular one is the Kevlar Fusion yeah. Laminate. And this is, folks, by far our most popular laminate. It is the highest strength to weight ratio. We have a lot of people that get these for tripping, hard usage. And there's three standard colors, Matt. Yeah, so we've got uh, sapphire here, which is a polyester cloth. Ruby, which is also a polyester. We got emerald, also a polyester cloth. And then we have our, our specialty laminates here. We have a carbon H first layer, a basalta negra commingle first layer and our black and yellow Kevlar, our amber laminate. And they all have the black and gold look on the inside. Now, Matt, the polyester, all the testing we've done and what we hear from the reps in the industry, this is a great layer to skin a Kevlar boat with. And to skin, folks, I mean to be the first layer on the boat. Yep. Yeah, no, it's great. Uh, you know, these all have clear finishes, so what we're seeing there is the material itself. It's giving your boat some color while still having that clear finish, and uh, it's got really good abrasion resistance. Excellent. Okay, let's put this one down on the ground for the second. Can you guys switch the boats out? Would be great. We have some extra sweet boats outside that we're periodically going to bring in. Now, this boat has something brand new for this year. This is what we are calling the Versa bow seat. It's available on the Prospector 15 and 16. And note how we've got an angle to the front for the bow paddler. That's standard. And what we did this year is we widened this out. We put an extra layer of strapping in here, and we also angled the bar on the inside. So when you're sitting in the bow seat, you've got lots of room for your derriere. But then when you're facing inwards, very comfortable position. You can also kneel very comfortably because we've angled the front bar here. It's very comfortable to kneel right here. You don't have the straight bar digging into the back of your thighs. Now, this is available on two of our symmetrical canoes, on the Prospector 15 and on the Prospector 16. It is a $100 extra cost option. It's only available with Cherry right now. And Matt, the side pots, you guys worked. This is something very precise. Let's put it back up on the horses for a sec. And why don't you talk about the side pots? Okay, so yeah. Um... At this point, now that we've been making side pods for uh, quite some time now, we, we literally have to make these pods model specific for every boat as it's got to fit all the contours of each model of boat. You know, uh, we play around for weeks with seat heights. Bill takes them for paddles. He lets us know if uh, the seat height's working or if we need to go lower. And then, uh, yeah, we literally uh, we develop the plugs right on the side of the boat to ensure good fitment for every single part. Now, lots of Canadians and folks in the U.S. and elsewhere like to paddle a symmetrical bow and solo in the traditional manner. This is going to be very popular. Now, another thing, Matt, that's so important is that it's hard to see, but we put a ribbing structure that's wider than the pod is itself, and we butt the joint very cleanly up to the core 
in the top of the boat. It's one of the most important things in our construction as it adds incredible rigidity and strength to the boat. Yeah, it's, uh, it was a real game changer for us figuring out that we could actually use the seat to add structure to the, uh, to the boat itself. So like Bill was saying, by us having our seat pods right in a foam rib position, we're really making the boat a lot more rigid and traditionally hanging from the gunnels, we really weren't adding a lot of strength, whereas now this seat is actually a structural part of your boat. Nice. Do you want to get that fell in again? Oh, there I just we want go. to make sure yep. the volume's good. Okay. All right, well, let's put this baby right up top, Matt, because we've got something really cool to show you folks next. So Matt loves to play with different <laughs> looks, different materials, and we've got a real treat here that Matt came to me earlier this winter and said, Bill, you have got to check this out. We've, you've got to let me build this. So <laughs> let's show the folks first. This is a... Carbon Fusion Prospector with the black cloth on the outside. And Matt, let's slowly roll this over while Joe's showing the light on it. So folks, take a look at this. Why don't you walk up and down it, Joe? Beautiful. So Matt, what was your inspiration and what, what did you want to create with this? Yeah, so, uh, you know, we, we sort of ordered a bunch of metal flakes and uh, we saw this particular color and we thought uh, this boat would just, uh, this metal flake would just make an awesome northern lights effect on a boat. That's what we were originally calling it, but hey, we're, uh, we're open for different names. Now, northern lights is Matt's name. Scott sent this out here a week or two ago to get feedback from you guys, and the most creative name we got back for this was Electric Pickle. I love that Don't name. know who it was, <laughs> that is a great one for this boat. So guys, we are, for this year, offering Metal Flake. And Matt, has you've built three or four boats for guys in the shop with it? Yep. Yep, yeah, we've done a bunch, and uh, the, the guys love it, and uh, they tell me every time they go out and paddle, it's uh, people just hoard around their boats, they have all kinds of questions, and they, they just can't believe how amazing they look. Now, you have your own little shop in your garage, and you've been playing around with metal at Flake for a long yeah. time, like, you are really good at this. Yeah, uh, I, I love to paint. Uh, ask the guys, one of my favorite things I always say is I, I love making things shiny. It's, uh, it's just one of my favorite things to do at the factory is just uh, make things look beautiful and uh, try different things. So we're going to show you guys a bunch of different metal flake finishes today. And the standard finishes are $800. Something like this is going to be a little bit more because there's multiple sprays in this one. If you're interested in any of these boats, please call us and talk to us. There's a quite a broad variety of, of colors and options we can do. So, Matt, let's put your baby back up here. And for now, we'll call it Northern Lights, unless we get a more creative name. Electric Pickle was close, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, no, that was a great name. Okay, I'm going to grab this one now, Matt. Let's uh, bring it out. Okay, this is another Kevlar Fusion. This one's a Prospector 16. And there's several things we want to show with this baby. One is that this has our cherry outers and carbon decks on it. Now, I grew up at a camp with cedar canvas canoes, beautiful wood throughout the whole boat, and I love the look and feel of wood in the boat. A standard cherry trim finish, like we showed you on the Prospector 15, is going to add 10 to 12 pounds of weight to the boat. This variation, where we do the carbon Kevlar trim, we create a flat on the outside, and then we epoxy on the cherry outers right here, and then we finish it with the beautiful carbon decks on it. This only adds a pound or two. So if you love the look and feel of wood, but you want a really lightweight boat, these we do lock. We do way more of these than the full cherry trim mat, don't we? Oh, yeah. This has uh, been quite a popular option. It's a little extra work for the team, but uh, the, the effects are just beautiful. It's so natural looking. I, lo I love these boats. Now, Matt, this particular one, and I don't know if we have Joe on the right side here. Let's turn this baby over. Oh, we got it right. All right. Perfect. So, folks, check this out. It's a little dusty, but this Canada flag image 
is built right into the gel coat. And Matt, this is not easy. Do you want to give a brief description of what you do with this? Yeah, so this uh, takes a little bit of time. Traditionally, uh, gel coat's not known for getting clean lines with masking and stuff, but uh, we have found a way at the factory. And uh, like Bill was saying, you know, this is built right into the gel coat. You know, there's no ridges. It's not a sticker. So, uh, you know, and you're getting to see that beautiful cloth coming through on the Canada flag. Now, this is an $800 specialty cloth finish, and then you can pay for the two-tone. An option, Matt, I've seen you do that's really cool looking. You can offset this where the image itself is, this, this is champagne. Yep. And then the ruby would be all around it. Yeah, so we can pretty well do the, the reverse where the Canada flag would be a solid color and then the rest of your boat is clear coat. We actually did one a while ago where it was an all black carbon boat and the Canada flag was done in red gel. It was uh, really sharp looking. So if yeah. you have some needs like that and everyone likes to have their own artful means of self-expression, there are different things we can do on it. Yeah. This is the Canada package. I know we've even done them in blue and green but it yep. hasn't always been red yeah exactly yeah you know uh the sky's the limit these days you know if, if you guys have a request just talk to the sales team and we'll we'll see what we can do for you and then before we put this up matt let's just joe show the folks the prospector 17 on the bottom we're not going to go over this one in detail but this is a beautiful emerald green and kevlar fusion it's got the black carbon kevlar trim on it and this particular one has the center seat in what we call the kids position for a third person or two kids to sit side by side. And guys, note how wide frame we make the seats. We make them as wide as we can. The bow seats we make as wide as we can. These are all carbon. And Matt, there was quite a bit involved with you tooling the seats up to make them in carbon. Yeah, it was a, a lot of work. Um... We sort of had an idea. We weren't sure we we're going to work, and uh, we just kind of went through with the process. And we're glad we did because now we have a, a carbon part that uh, you know we can have in our carbon tech package. Where traditionally you could have a wooden seat there, which you know after a long time is going to start to to rot out a little bit. Whereas uh, the carbon should be good for the life of the boat. So guys, we make these right in the same shape as our cherry seats. Where you we bring it wide out in the back to give you lots of room for our ample posteriors of today. And then we angle the front bar forward. This is a feature on all our seats with the carbon Kevlar trim and wood trim boats. And then, Matt, talk to them about what you've really done special on this. Yeah, so this was a big part of, uh, we designed a way to make a carbon fiber I-beam integrated with our low-density foam core, which is just making these carbon seats just, just absolutely incredibly strong. There's, like, absolutely no flex to them whatsoever. Nice. Now, the candles, the thwarts, the yoke are made a really cool way. Do you want to give the folks a little rundown? Yeah, so uh, our handles, our thwarts, and yokes are all made by a very special bladder molding process that we developed over the years. And uh, it's really cool to see these three-dimensional parts come out of the mold in one piece, almost completely finished. Usually all we need to do once they come out of the mold is just do a little finishing work along the seams there and uh, they're just an absolutely incredible part and uh, nice and light and super super strong nice okay let's put this baby back okay and we're gonna start on the Kiwadens folks so three prospector models prospector 15 16 and 17 we also have another symmetrical boat called the um, Algonquin 16, which David Yost, our master designer, has told us that he feels it is the best boat in the industry for absolute beginners to get. It tracks straight, it has lots of stability, and it really cuts the water nicely. We have one outside we may show you a peek on later. But right now, Matt, let's grab the top ruby one right here. Now, this one's really cool. And it's got a feature that uh, we've really been starting to do more and more with. So this has the interior gel coat on it. And Matt, do you want to tell the folks just what it's all about? Yep. We've, uh, we've been started doing some of these, uh, we call them a diamond gel coat. It's uh, great to have in your boat to uh, just for cleanup and abrasion resistance over the years. 
Uh, Algonquin Outfitters, we've been doing this for a few years here now, and it's worked out really well for Algonquin Outfitters, so now we're offering this to our customers as well. Um, it doesn't add a lot of weight to your boat. We try and keep it as thin as possible just to make sure that, uh, you know, you're, you're getting that wear resistance on the bottom. But if you're a fisherman or you're doing a lot of portaging with uh, muddy shoes and boots, you're definitely going to want a coating like this to help protect the bottom of your boat. So let me interject here for a second. Scott just handed me this list. We have viewers from Nova Scotia, Florida, Maryland, Quebec, C'est la vie. Windsor, Ontario, Hamilton, Ontario, from Muskoka, Roslyn, BC, from the UK. Hey, mate. Iona, New York, Aberdeen, Washington, and I'm sure there's a bunch more. So a couple other nice things about this Kiwaden 16, guys. This has the bow sliding seat in it, which is an option. This is a great feature to get with anyone smaller in the boat, as they can move the seat forward and put their feet right on a float tank. My partner, Adrian, is about 5'7", and she loves this because she can move the seat up. And when she's paddling, it makes it much narrower for her, so it's easier for, for, to her to reach over the sides when she's paddling. And it also brings the bow down a bit, so it gives us a better balance position. Now, many folks in Canada learn how to solo paddle kneeling. This is a detachable kneeling thwart. We used to make these half this width and they were totally uncomfortable. Matt, let's put this down on the ground real quick. Why don't we come back this way? So what we found is we call this the double wide kneeling thwart. We do it on our carbon tech packages also. We work quite a while on getting the right height for these. And because it's wider, you can put virtually all the weight of your butt on this bar and hardly any on your knees and feet at all, so the blood can still circulate. And you can paddle comfortably for quite a while. So if you're a kneeler and you're going to get an asymmetrical boat, such as a Kiwaden, Having this detachable kneeling fort, which you can take out when you're, say, you're going on a tandem trip so you don't have the extra weight, this is a great option to get. So this boat right here is set up like I really like a, a Kiwaden 16. Bow slider, the interior gel coat, the ease of cleaning it is incredible. Detachable kneeling thwart. So, Matt, why don't we get another baby out? Right One on. of our feature boats for today is coming next, folks. And let's take this baby down, Matt. So, folks, this is TechStream. And, Matt, I understand this is TechStream with an aluminized coating on it. Yeah, so there's uh, an aluminized coating on it to give it that uh, color effect. It's still carbon fiber underneath, so we're, we're getting this really cool look that's a little non-traditional for carbon fiber. And uh, yeah, it just looks incredible. And uh, I believe we've got a few different color options as well for this. So guys, TechStream is what's referred to as a spread toe fabric. The, it's very wide. So technically, it, this is very tight also. So you get an even higher cloth to resin ratio. They're super, super strong. Now, just so you know, this is a real specialty cloth. This is a $2,000 option. There's a variety of colors that you can get it in. If you're looking to have your absolute dream boat made and you love the look of the colored text stream, and guys, look as I turn this. When you go by this, this has the Mona Lisa effect. It follows you. It's a super, super cool look. Get in touch with us. Let us know. We can let you know what colors are available. And uh, Matt, this is not easy to lay. Susan Ebbs, who runs our laminating room, 
lays all the text stream boats up. And, and Matt, she said that this one took a long time. Yeah, this was a tough one. So uh, this material is uh, it's very rigid and tough to go through curves and stuff like that. So a lot of attention has to be taken to uh, to put this in. It's actually uh, it's hard to tell, but believe it or not, it's actually put in in multiple pieces. And Sue just does an incredible job of lining all the weaves up to make it look like one seamless piece. So let's turn this baby and show folks the other new thing for this year. So we are calling these custom graphic finishes on the hull. So we have the Canada package. This is a new package and a shout out to Paddle Portage in Australia who has a very similar logo. We, uh, Carmen created one here with uh, the paddler holding a paddle. This is, again, built right into the gel code, folks. This is an absolutely incredible finish. And yes, you'll see the scratch marks. We all call them character marks. This is super, super cool. This is an $800 option. And with the two, Tony, at 200, so it'll be a thousand bucks if you wanted it like this. And Matt, this boat has a bunch of other things we should show the folks. And Joe, do you want to tune in down here? On the carbon boats and Expedition Kevlar boats this year, and Expedition Carbon, we're doing these black internal skid plates, and they're carbon for even more toughness, and it really cleans the finish up in the ends of the boat, and it blends in real nicely to the black carbon end caps and the black carbon Kevlar trim. Now, this baby also has the bow sliding seat in it. Absolutely beautiful feature to have again, and I think all the Kiwadens should have them. Carbon yoke, and we have, guys, a new carbon foot bar system this year where it's on this pin system right now. What are the names of these, Matt? Uh, we call them like a, a lynch pin. So they come in and out pretty easily. Now, you definitely want to, folks, something I need to say. Anything detachable in the boat, a carbon foot bar, detachable seats, detachable yoke, you want to take them out when you're traveling on the highway. Let's put this down on the ground for a second, Matt. So one of the things that we also want to point out to you guys is we typically put the foot braces for someone up to about six foot four, six foot five to fit in, I'm six four, and this it's like this was made for me, guys. It's an absolute great system. Why do you want a carbon foot bar? You want a carbon foot bar that when you paddle, if you really like to lean on your pedal, if you really like to give it some stick, it allows you to push with your feet and you actually transmit energy by pushing on your feet and leaning on your paddle. If you're tripping, you often have packs there. So you can put your feet on your packs. If you're day paddling, I absolutely love this carbon foot bar. It's such a good setup to have. If you're taller than 6'4", six, 6'5", six, let us know and we can ex easily extend the foot bar a little bit further forward makes it really, really comfortable. So Matt, this boat is a beauty. This is an amazing boat. You can't go wrong with the Carbon Tech package. There's two boats in this showroom that I absolutely want. Well, there's three, or maybe <laughs> there's 30. But this is one of them, guys. I, if you, when you see this look in person, it's like, holy crap. This is so cool. I want one. <laughs> So Kiwaden 16, this is the carbon fusion laminate. Now we have a boat here that's making a special appearance. Let's bring it out, Matt. <laughs> Guys, this is my tripping canoe. It's Bill's workhorse. And I, Matt, <laughs> do you want to look at the serial number? I don't even know how old it is. Oh, well, it looks like she's from 2017. 2017. Adrian and I use this on all our trips and we absolutely have beat on this boat and this has been an experimental boat for us we've moved the the back seat forward we've played around with different heights we've gone through this is an older generation of the carbon foot bar i absolutely love using a tump line when i carry a canoe I, it's how i grew up at camp 
This is going to be something that we're going to be offering this year. A Swifty Tump Line is going to be one of our accessories. This also, folks, you want this. If you're tripping, if you're carrying your boat at all, these are put on with Velcro. This is a, there's many yoke pads on the market. This is by far the most comfortable one I've used. We use the same foam that we use as the base for our pack boat seats and kayak seats. It's so comfortable. I think it's $30. It's one of the best investments you'll ever make. So this boat, let's turn it over, Matt. <laughs> so Matt, we are now using an epoxy vinyl ester resin system. We've been using it for over a year now, and it's yep. been custom formulated for us. And yep. Do you want to tell the folks about it? Yeah, so we've been uh, working with a resin company, and we developed a resin that works just great for our production levels and for our product. So uh, we're using an amazing resin and a proprietary ultra-thin gel coat on our laminates as well to help with flexibility and durability. Now, why put a thin gel coat on? Well, traditionally, uh, the weakest point on a boat would be the gel coat. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it doesn't have material in it, which makes it a little more brittle than the resin, which is, you know, has material running through it. So uh, we want to keep the gel thin so that your boat can flex. Our laminates are thin, so we want the gel coat to be able to flex with your boat to prevent cracking over the life of the boat. Now, yeah. the gel coat gives the boat the beautiful shine. Yeah. And the, one of the most important things in talking to all the, the reps in the composite industry yeah. I get is the UV protection. You just can't get that for, with boats that you don't put a gel on. Yeah, oh, exactly. You know, when we've got a solid color on the bottom, you have pretty well ultimate. Your material is totally protected by the pigments in the gel coat. You know, even our clear gel coat does have UV inhibitors in it to help with, uh, you know, UV damage on your laminate and stuff like that, which is definitely something you really want on your boat. So, Joe, let's show the folks right here. Adrian and I have hit rocks so hard. And look at this. This has literally chewed the gel coat away a little bit. Now... We get customers, here's another spot over here, and you can see some of these scratches guys are so deep, like we're fully loaded, hitting rocks, we paddle at a pretty good clip. Things like this, I don't worry about. You can get thin gel coat cracks, you can wear the gel down a little bit. Yep. I call them character marks, and the more character marks your boat has, the better life it is living. And Luna has been living an incredible life. This <laughs> boat has been killing it. So, Matt, we get a lot of people that get little hairline cracks or get a mark like this, and they want to bring it in to get it fixed to, for, to us. But they really don't need to. Yeah, I mean, unless you really want to get it fixed just for the cosmetic aspects, I wouldn't worry too much about the laminate of your boat or its durability or anything like that. Once you've got a crack, you've just got a little character mark there. But if you're cool at looking at the crack, don't worry about your gel coat falling off your boat or your laminate degrading. You should be just fine to keep on paddling and having fun with your boat. With the resin infusion process, even if it's worn down to the cloth, water's not going to soak into it. It's not, the, the laminate's not going to deteriorate. Yeah, no, you're, you're good to go. I wouldn't, unless it's an absolutely major crack where maybe an impact happened and you've strained the laminate, but small cracks like Bill's got on his boats, no worries. Now, yeah. here's a big shout out to John at Collinsville Canoe and Kayak. John uses nail polish. So he'll get an off-white to put on a champagne bottom. Just put a real thin coat of nail polish on. On the clear coat, he'll get a clear nail polish, and he showed me some of the work he's done with it. It's a great temporary solution mm -hmm. rather than doing an actual gel coat repair. It's not a fun project to do, but it's a great way to temporarily yeah. work on your boat. And Joe, can you come over here for a sec? I just want to show folks the end. Many people get skid plates, which allows you just to wear the boat more and more. So you can see this one doesn't have it. We've literally worn it right down to the cloth. So I don't worry about it. There are eight layers of cloth on the bottom right here. There's incredible protection built into this boat. So this boat is good to go. This is going to last many years. And uh, I can tell you that... Um, Adrian and I don't always see the rocks. We all know <laughs> paddling on trips. Sometimes you're in that darker water and the waves are hitting. You can't see things and kaboom, <laughs> we're really hitting them.
Demonstrate the Tump Line. Okay, who is that from, Scott? Uh, Todd, Todd Abbey. Oh, Todd, I believe, has a Cruiser 14-8 pad. So let me just show this real quick. So I can carry a pack and the canoe at the same time with this. So see the tump right here? Got it set up right on my head. And what's cool about it, Joe, I'm going to pull the bow down a little bit. I can pull the bow down, and it tightens on my head a little bit. So when I'm going uphill, I lift it up a little bit. It puts a little bit more weight on my shoulder. And the, the straps, of course, are adjustable, but I've really just found the sweet spot for me. And sometimes I'll alternate it. And, guys, here's something really funny. Every now and then you can get a stiff neck. Every now and then in a portage, I'll just do this for a little bit, just to let the blood flow. But the Tump Line is a great system. The other thing this has that Adrian and I swear by, this has our padded seats in it. And guys, these, I think they're a $60 option. They've got straps on the bottom to pull them, pull them tight on it. When we're 20 years old, we can sit on anything and be comfortable. A cooler, a pack, rocks, logs. As we age and get older, comfort in the boat is so important. And there's been so much done in the kayak industry. And we've done a lot with our canoe seats. We feel we've got the best shape for a canoe seat on the market. If you complement that with these padded seats that have an incredible amount of foam in them, these things are so comfortable. And you can unclip them. You just They work like a backpack strap. So we can take them off. If we stop for lunch or when we stop to camp, we can take them right off and put them on the, at the campsite. So, so comfortable. So Adrian, Luna made them the performance today. <laughs> All right, Luna. A brand new Kiwaden 17 is an awfully sweet ride, though, guys. This is a very weathered one that has lots of nice look to it. So what do you think, the limousine? Oh, yeah. Let's bring this baby out. So this baby's got a bunch of things going on with it. Hello down there. <laughs> yeah, she's a beast. She's a big boat. So this is our big family boat, four-person tripper. And we really wanted to show you this boat for a number of reasons. The first one is, this is our Expedition Kevlar laminate that has the beautiful basalt and negra commingle on the outside of it. It's got a two-tone bottom. It's got the beautiful color match skid plates on it. This baby is set up to really use. Now, it's got the carbon tech package on the inside. And what's really neat about this, guys, it has both detachable seats in it. This has what we call the kid seat, where we put right in front of the, the yoke, and we have the turn the yoke around backwards. And then this is what we call the solo center seat. So again, this one's detachable, so if you just are going on a trip with two people, you can take them out to give you a lot more room. Now, Matt, I've got the colors for the Expedition Kevlar laminate. Now, this has the most cloth of any boat we build. It's got four full layers plus yep. a bunch of parses, piece, parts and pieces in it. Yep. Yep. So uh, this is really cool. So the, the colors are kind of similar to our Kevlar Fusion. So we've got the sapphire, the ruby, and the emerald. But what's cool about our Expedition laminates is uh, the layer that we're putting behind the first layer is giving us a much darker look. So it actually gives a, a very... Different look to the ruby, the emerald, the sapphire. Yeah, there we go. There's you can the really Kevlar see. Fusion, so you can yep. see the difference. So even though the first layer is the same, you can see we get a much cooler effect. And uh, you've got that extra abrasion resistance to your boat. The uh, the Expedition Kevlar is one of my favorite laminates just for its durability and, and its look. I love the look of our EK finishes. Are we good, Scott? All right. How many viewers are we getting? Uh, 135. 135. That's good, guys. Now, the Expedition Kevlar laminate is, we've, we've been building more and more of these. And I love this laminate, guys, because of the look. I love the earth tone look of the yeah. Basalta Negra on the inside. Super cool look. It's just absolutely gorgeous. 
This one with it on the outside, it really accentuates it also. It's really nice blend. Yeah, it's beautiful. Now, who's going to buy this boat? The Expedition Kevlar boats, we sell a lot to people that really want to use their boat hard. To people that may lend their boat to kids or friends and they not know what's going to happen to it. It's not a whitewater river tripping boat where boom, 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 you're going down a rapid, running over rocks, running over logs. But this is a laminate that you can really beat on quite a bit. And um, many of our competitors have very durable laminates, and I would rate this right up there with any of them. Yep. And with the carbon Kevlar trim on it, you're going to get it lighter with a nice swift boat. Yep. So let's put this baby away. How are we doing on time, Scott? 12.45. 12.45. Okay, Matt, let's bring down this baby up top here. It's a little bit shorter. So this is a beautiful Prospector 15 Combi. So the Combi canoes, guys, are by far our fastest growing category right now. It's, um, it's amazing how many of these we've been building. And so many folks have been wanting to buy a solo canoe, but they want to get a tandem canoe, but they are not sure what they really want. We took our most popular tandem canoes, the Prospector 15 and 16s and the Key Waden 16 and 17, and we specifically tooled them up to have side pods that are right in the middle of the boat where if you're paddling solo, you're right in the balance position. Now this baby's set up. This is a sassafras yoke. Now the cherry yolks weigh about two and a half pounds, and we've got the sassafras that weighs about a pound and a half, and that the carbon yolk is also an option. It weighs about a pound and a half. The sassafras mat, it's a little bit more flexible, but you've done some strength testing with it. Yeah, at first, when we first got it, uh, we were a little skeptical at the factory, but uh, once we buttoned it up on the uh, force gauge, it was testing just as well as the cherry was. The fact that it has a little flex is what was giving it that bit of uh, extra strength. It's just going to bounce with you as you carry the boat, and it should be pretty comfortable. Sometimes yeah. that's nice on a portage, actually. Yeah, it's like a shock absorber. Exactly. Right? You get a little bit of give when you're yeah. going up and down down the trail. Yeah, no, it, we, we were quite impressed, actually. We had a few of the sassafras uh, yolks uh, take over 300 pounds before failure, which is amazing. Nice. Yeah. Now, we also get, folks, a fair amount of people that get the combis get a carbon foot bar. This particular one is set up in the stern position. You can also get it set up in the solo position. Different options, and here's something that we've been doing more and more of. Because the thwart's right in front of you, for the universal mount package where you can put fish equipment on, a GoPro, different cameras, this has been really popular to get the mount package on the bow thwart. So with the combi canoes, the bow thwart always comes standard to give the boat the proper rigidity and stiffness. So, Matt, let's put this baby back up. This one is the carbon fusion laminate, which actually is one of our most popular. So this shows you it's got the carbon and negra H-weave on the outside. And again, we're putting the carbon internal skid plates on them this year. The inside has the carbon and negra H-weave on it also. You can really see the ribs there that way that we put in that add a lot of structural integrity to the boat. This boat we're not going to take down, but this is a Prospector 16 Combi in sapphire with the Expedition Kevlar on the inside. This one has the mount package again on the bow thwart. It's got the carbon foot bar right here. And it's got the uh, detachable seat in the center position, which if you're going on a tandem trip, is a fantastic option to have. And then, Matt, let's pull out this Key Waden 16 combi. Oh, this is another one of the boats here, folks, that I absolutely want. This baby is beautiful. So, Matt, the side pods. We talked earlier about the importance of the angles and the shape and so on. Yep. When you put the detachable version in, they're wider. 
there, you need different side pods than you put in the standard boats. Yep, so uh, when we first started making the seat pods, uh, removable seats weren't really an option. So once we started with removable seats, we ran into a couple of problems. So we actually extended the pods out just slightly, just so that we can get our hardware in there. And so that it's not too fiddly when you're trying to remove your seat. You don't want it smack and hitting the gunnels. It just gives you a little more room, makes it a little easier to get the seats in. Now, why don't we do this, Matt? This is really cool, guys. This one has what we call the chick quick, <laughs> the quick change seating system, which is available on the Keywayden 16, the Prospector 15, and Prospector 16 combis this year. And that is the bow and stern seats are detachable. You can take them right out. So let's say that I'm going on a solo trip. So we'll just take the seats out. Look at this, guys. Look how much room you have for gear and so on. And, Joe, let's do this. We'll do another little uh, flipping thing here. So with the bow thwart, what I like about it also in this setup, it's right there for you to hold on to while you're portaging. This setup with a foam yoke pad and a tump line, ooh la la. I'll go in the bush for a month like this. <laughs> So this is a beautiful Expedition Kevlar. And again, it's got the basalt and Agra commingle on the outside. It's got the beautiful cherry outers on it. The guys are just killing it with these boats that they're building. Now, this particular one, let's take the yoke off this, Matt. This one's set up in a position that I really like. Here, I'll just hand this to you quickly. So these detachable yokes, guys, whenever you're, you're driving somewhere, take them off. So I'm going to take this up, Matt. Let's put this baby down. So for bigger people, this is a really good setup for solo paddling. So carbon foot bar here, canoe paddle, a lot of people getting the combis that are using the, um, the center seat are using a kayak paddle. And you want to get a real wide one, a 240 to 260 adjustable works great because the boat's a little bit wider. But this is a really neat boat for an average to bigger size person to solo trip with. Now, if you're really into solo paddling, guys, it's, we need to emphasize this. You really need a solo boat. This just gives you an alternative if you only can buy one boat. But I want four or five boats, and this would be in my stable. So for those collectors out there, this would be a great boat to have. So why don't we put this back up, Matt, and we'll show the folks why we call it the quick change seating system. Let's put her all back together. Let's put it back together. So we've come back from our solo trip. We want to go on a tandem trip. So this quickly, we can change the seats out on it. Do you want to grab that? Yes, sir. We'll put the yoke on. So with the center seat on the day paddle, you can also put three people in this boat. Now, we also do this in the Keywayden 17, the combi version, so you could have three people on a wilderness trip. This is the look of the boat if you're going tandem paddling. So the yoke is sticking up a little bit, but it's a beautiful setup. Yeah. And again, you've got the bow thwart there, so you've got something to hold on to. Amazing. Nice. So Joe, let's show the boat right behind you real quick before we move this one. <laughs> so here is a Kiwaden 17 combi. And we quite often set these up for someone with a family's getting it. It's got the bow sliding seat in the front. It's got the carbon foot bar in the center position. Now this particular one has the multi-height pod system for the center seat. And what this allows people to do is in the lower position, gives you more stability, a good grandparent position, or if someone really wants to do a lot of fishing, it's a great setup to have. Okay, let's put this baby back. It's time to talk solo canoes. Everyone needs one of those too, don't they? Oh yeah. And we've got a baby. So let's take this one down this way, Matt, for a second. I'll come over here with Joe. Our solo rack's right here. 
So, Kiwi in 14, Kiwi in 15, very popular boats. There are touring boats that we've been selling for many years for people that, generally speaking, like to paddle in the traditional manner with a straight shaft paddle. People can use a, a bent shaft with them also. They're very straight keeled in the back end. This Kiwi in 14 up top has the cherry outers with the emerald green finish. This is the Expedition Kevlar Laminate. And then this baby, this is a Kiwaden 15 with the ruby red over champagne. And we're right side up here, Joe. This one has the Canada package on the bottom. Absolutely beautiful boat. And then let's look at this boat right here. So let's pull these horses out. And just so we can take this baby. So something new that we're offering this year as an option, folks, is this is a Prospector 14, which we sell tons of. This one has the new Sassafras interior, which on our pack boats or solos you can order. It's that same material we showed you with the yoke of. So the handles and the thwarts would be put on with Sassafras. The seat is still cherry. But it's a little bit lighter, so some people want to, if you're really concerned about every single pound, go sassafras. It's a great option to have. This one also has, again, the interior gel coat. And this is that beautiful basalt and negra commingle on both the outside and inside. This is how I would get a Prospector 14 set up with a carbon foot bar. Now, I want the carbon foot bar, guys, because it allows you to move your feet around in, into the middle of the boat if you need to. Kayak foot braces are also an option. Your feet are right on the outside. If you always have, say, a dog in the middle, fish tackle box, the carbon foot bar, the, the kayak foot braces work great. They're really good in the more narrow boats. The smaller cruisers is where they absolutely excel. For the Prospector 14, I'm going with the, the, the carbon foot bar all the way. This is a beauty, man. Oh, it's so light. Okay. Right now, why don't you leave, pull this boat out, and we're going to go way down there. Well, sounds good. And let's not give too much away. We don't want to angle it the wrong way here. So, Joe, do you want to stay towards the outside window? So, guys, this is the boat that I'm absolutely most excited about. So, <clears throat> when I saw this material, I just said, I got to have it. And this is what's called Xylon, and it's with a textream finish. And, Joe, let's show the folks. It's not always perfect. Like, right in here, it's not quite as tight as the colored textream but it's absolutely beautiful. It almost has a copper finish to it. And Matt, tell us about Xylon. What is special about Xylon? Uh, Xylon is a very unique material. It's actually, uh, technically it's three times stronger than Kevlar, hence why we uh, thought it would be a great idea to make uh, one of our boats out of. So it is a little susceptible to UV, but with our UV inhibitors and if our customers are using Aerospace 303, everything should be fine with the boat. And uh, even if it does degrade to, with UV a little bit, it'll always still be stronger than Kevlar. So what Matt's referring to is there's a material called Protectin 303, which you can spray the outside on, quickly wipe it into the boat. It's not like the old car waxes where you killed your elbow. And it's a super material. It provides a film of essentially suntan lotion for the boat. So I was going to do it today. It, like, it takes five minutes to go up and down the boat, but we have so many beautiful boats to show you. So, guys, this is the first boat I've had the factory build for me in many years. I usually take boats like Luna that are a misfit that come off and someone needs to own it. <laughs> this is a Cruiser 16.8 in the solo canoe version. <clears throat> and check this out. This has the nice contour seat system. 
And actually, before we do that, and it's a reason I wanted you on the inside, Joe, you better come over here for a second. I almost forgot one of the most important things about this. People that know our company may know we did a video with Julian from Romania, and he ordered this super cool look on the bottom of his boat. So he wanted to paddle down. He's taking the boats to Romania. He wanted to paddle on the Danube River, and when he pulled the boat out of the water, make a statement that he had a really cool swift boat. And check the detail of this out, guys. This is literally all in the gel coat, and this is that Xylon Tech Stream. This is a $2,000 option, the Xylon Tech Stream, like the you, you, we have in the colored Tech Streams. The logo like this is an $800 option. We are able to do custom inscriptions on the bottom. We have another video out. If you guys want to see a super cool video, Google Swift Canoe Nano, N-A-N-O. It's my friend Art that got Nano written on the bottom of the boat. It's the name of his company, Nanospheres, and it's also the name of his dog. It's a, one of the best videos we've ever done. If you have a particular image or logo you may want on the bottom of the boat, you can send it to us. We may or may not be able to do it. There's some things that, Matt, why don't you talk about this, the, the detail on this. Yeah, like I said, you know, traditionally in like uh, automotive painting and stuff, when you're masking more intricate images, you're allowed to let the paint dry and then peel your masking later. Gel coat's a little different, so we, uh, we have to move very quickly and we actually peel this out of the gel coat while it's still soaking wet, so it can be very difficult to get clean lines sometimes. But as usual, with uh, years of experience, we've figured out some ways to get some really cool logos in the boats. Matt, I want it. It's got your name on it. <laughs> now, Brandon told me I should say one thing to all you folks out there. Any of the boats that you see in the showroom are for sale. You can buy any of these particular boats, except for Luna. Adrian would kill me if we sold Luna. But we are selling these particular boats also, or we could build one that you may want that would may be very similar to any of these. So, Matt, let's put this beautiful boat over here so we can load it up in my car after. <laughs> So, Matt, one of the, the areas of creation that I'm most impressed in what you've done is Metal Flake. And we're going to talk about these guys now. So, Joe, why don't you just, while Matt's talking about how he does this, why don't you run the, uh, that up and down these boats right here? So, yeah, this year uh, we did some experimentation with uh, metal flake in our boats. We, uh, as you saw earlier, we had the Northern Lights with some green metal flake in it. This uh, purple boat up here was actually a color our production manager, Jillian, really uh, loved and chose. So it's actually a purple ghost pearl that's put down first, and then we follow it up with a, a, a purple behind it, and it's giving a, a very unique effect. It looks super, super cool out in the sunshine. Um, then we've got uh, the burnt orange metal flake here, which looks incredible when the lights hit it. This is one of my uh, favorite ones that we did uh, at the factory this year. And uh, we hope to experiment some more. There's so many different options when it comes to paints and pigments and metal flakes and stuff like that. So uh, the factory just loves to experiment. Everyone has all kinds of ideas and we just, uh, we only have so much time to try them all. So Matt, the, these are, we find the cruisers are like, these are really cool solo boats. Oh, they're, they're amazing. They look really cool at the metal flake paint jobs with just uh, the, the really curvy sides on the 14.8. The sun just shines off them. They just look incredible. And yeah. we find with solo boats too, people really like to personalize them. How much, like with a cruiser 14.8, how much weight would you say this finish would add to the weight of the boat? Uh, this finish, we're, we're probably looking at roughly a pound or two. It's actually not too bad. So uh, the colors we're even putting in, we're actually keeping them kind of opaque so that we can keep them as thin as possible. So, you know, the, the odd time really close, you may see a little bit of the weave pattern behind it and, and stuff like that. But we want to keep the weight down. We don't want it too thick either because, uh, like we were saying earlier, we want to make sure your boat can flex without cracking, but we still want to give you these really cool paint jobs. 
So let's talk about the top boat. Um, many folks may know Jillian Conrad manages our factory, and she's just grown up from the ranks. She started as a kayak assembler, and she's got an incredible aptitude and been a great for Swift. She felt that we needed a little bit more of a feminine look for one of these metal flake boats. Yeah. So this particular color, Matt, have we named this one yet? This uh, color? Not that I know of. I don't think there's a name for it, but uh, feminine or not, I think this boat's incredible. It looks, uh, it yeah, looks really cool out in the sun. Yeah, there's going to be guys that like this boat too. So guys, we're wondering, this is part of the Swift Swag giveaway. Let us know which model, the Cruiser 12.8. What would be a nice name for this metal flake finish? If someone comes up with a really good creative name, Scott's going to give you a Swiss swag package. And then this one right here, it's kind of got a, um, a burnt orange or sunset orange. We need a name for this particular metal flake also. If you come up with something really creative for this 14.8, let us know. <laughs> And Matt, let's pull this baby out. This is one of your most creative jobs. So we'll put it over there again. Sounds good. We're facing upstream against all the other boats right now, but we did it with the Cruiser 16.8 also. So guys, that Cruiser 16.8 I showed you, the one, my boat over here. We also do the 15.8 and the 14.8 cruisers with this configuration also. The foot brace system is so easy to adjust, and we put lower boxes in the 15.8 and lower still in the 14.8 to give it the right stability. Really fun boats to paddle. Now, the Cruiser 14.8 pack boat is one of our most popular boats, and this particular one has the Raven finish. And Matt, do you want to tell the folks how you do this one? Yeah, this is a cool finish we've been doing for a, for a couple of years now and has really picked up a, a lot of popularity. So uh, this one starts off with our original superior blue and then it, uh, it fades out into a translucent superior blue and it lightens up and lightens up until we're into the, the clear carbon fiber finish. And uh, we just love the effect of this boat. It looks really cool out in the sunshine. Now, this finish you do a lot of, too. Like, you've really nailed this finish. Yeah, this, this is beautiful. This one we love, and uh, we're glad the customers like it. And, uh, yeah, the pictures we get are just incredible of them out on the water with the sun shining on them. Now, this one has the splash jack deck option. We only do it on the Cruiser 14A. Carmen, our marketing manager who runs our Algonquin store, tells me that she also has put it on the 15A Cruiser. We're working on getting them done for other ones. There's no immediate dates on them. I'm going to show you how quickly I can take this off. This is a really good option to have for people that like to paddle late in the season where the water gets cooler and you want to keep your feet drier. When I use it, what I do is I take it, I just fold it in half like that, roll it up when I'm done with it, and then if you're going on a portage, it fits real nicely right inside the seat here. This tucks down real nicely and really snaps in well. Um, Matt, you and me want to switch those boats. We got to get that uh, a couple other boats yeah, you know well, about I, in. We'll, well put uh, the one will... behind you backwards and then. Sounds good. And Joe, can you come over here? We just had someone ask if I could go over this in more detail on it. Maybe you could come over up in front here. So this seating system, I absolutely love. So if right here, you see these clips right here. I can push this out. I can make the foot brace longer that quickly. So I like to paddle with my knees bent. And I find the straighter your legs in both a kayak and a pack boat, or actually that the more tired your legs get this. over time I, if I you keep this. your legs bent a little bit and you move them some when you paddle it just keeps the blood flowing your ligaments your tendons your muscles just feel better many people like the cruiser 15 8 and 16 8 because the seats are up a little bit higher you get a little bit more a little bit more relaxed angle with your body 
Um, like in a car, cars are designed where your feet are lower than your butt is. So a lot of people in a kayak, which you're almost at a right angle in, paddle for a couple hours and their legs start falling asleep and so on. We get them in these pack boats, the Cruiser 14.8, the 15.8, the 16.8, where you can move around more in, and they absolutely love the feel of it. Now, with the box right on the floor of this boat, the carbon box, it's a really cool setup. And, and Terry Petty, you're a freaking genius for developing the system right here. So the sliders on carbon tubes right here, this is a carbon box that Terry specifically developed. He put these channels in it so water can flow right through it. And whenever, when I used to marathon race when I was young, we'd throw water in the boat at the beginning and see where it goes in the boat to get the balance point. Once you figure it out, you know the feel of where it's balanced and you really know where to sit. When you put weight on this, it really stays still. Now this seat pan is a Charlie Wilson design and uh, Matt and Terry have modified it a little bit. It's got a really comfortable feel to it. So the seat and the foot brace system slide together. It's very cool. So if you are out paddling and you're finding you're a little tail heavy, you can just kick your weight up a little bit. You can move the seat forward and the foot brace moves right with you. You don't have to readjust the foot brace. It's, it's a really super cool setup to have in the boat. Okay, we got some other toys, Matt, to show people now. So hope that was good. Guys, any questions you have, keep feeding them to us. Are we getting color suggestions, Scott? A ton, yeah. A ton, all right. So, Scott, why don't you show Scott for a second? Scott, hard at work behind the back. He's feeding me questions here, guys. So, is the new Versa seat available on aluminum trim boats? It's only available on carbon Kevlar trim boats because of the way we do the trim system and so on. So, Matt, what do you think of this baby? What? Talk to us. What is this all about? So this one is pretty cool. Uh, I believe, uh, you know, we've had the Raven fade, and it's done really well, and we felt like it needed a brother. So we're, we're calling this the Robin fade currently, unless uh, any customers have a cooler name for it. And, uh, yeah, there's a, a, a translucent candy apple pigment in there that, uh, you know, goes from dark to lighter. It's really cool in the sunshine, and we can still see that carbon fiber finish just shining through. Now, like the Raven Fade, you do this in multiple sprays, don't you? Yeah, so it's, it's layered up a bit. Like I said, a lot of these custom paint jobs, what's really cool about them is we've actually been putting a full layer of clear down first, just so that you will be able to scratch your boat up a bit without affecting your, your awesome paint job too much. Yeah. Awesome. So anyone has a name other than Robin for the super cool translucent red finish, please let us know. Brandon came up with the Robin name originally. I don't know if it has the exact look of a Robin, but it's a super cool looking boat, guys. One thing about all these finishes also, I picked these boats up on a sunny day, and when these boats were out on the trailer in the sun, it was like holy sparkle. I could have been in a parade. They, they, these light up even more on a real bright sunny day. The Raven finish, this finish, absolutely gorgeous in the sunlight. And Matt, here's a, on the bottom, we can't forget this boat. So here's a Cruiser 15.8, which is for a little bit of a larger size paddler that loves the cruisers or someone that really wants to load it down with gear. This is an absolutely super cool look. This is the Carbon Anegra Textream finish. So this particular one, absolutely beautiful. Now this is a $1,400 option, and then $200 for the two-tone. We've done 30, 40 Carbon Anegra Textreams over the year. Super strong cloth. Like our Carbon Fusion laminate that's Carbon and Anegra, the white you see in here is Anegra, 
It's a, it's a very flexible material. When you mix it with a rigid, more stiff carbon, you actually come up with a stronger boat than doing an all carbon. It's got more give and flexibility yep. to it. Yeah, exactly, yep, yeah. The traditionally carbon on its own tends to be quite rigid and just having that enegra in there is going to give you that, uh, that little bit of flex to your laminate so your boat can move. Now, yeah. Matt, can you tell the folks why we want to do two tones with the tech streams? Um, for tech streams, we definitely want to do the two tone as we were discussing earlier about uh, it's a very hard material to lay up. So there are some seams and stuff in it. And uh, just by having a two tone, it helps us give you a really clean finish on your boat and, you know, we can hide some of those seams down in the champagne just to give you a flawless looking boat. Okay, we're missing the Bowen boat I thought we'd have come in. So we need that other special boat, Meg. Okay, why don't we talk over here, Joe, while they're doing that? So guys, the Cruiser 14.8 pack and the Prospector 14 pack are by far best-selling pack boats. Now, the Prospector 14 has our seat system, it's adjustable, the lumbar support. You can really see the padding here. It's wider, it's got more volume to it. All the pack boats come standard with the adjustable kayak foot braces in them. On a wider boat like the Prospect for 14, you may want to consider the carbon foot bar like on the, the solo canoe version of this boat. So this is the standard carbon fusion laminate with a carbon, a Negra H-weave on the outside and then the Carbon and Negra H-weave on the inside, and we have secret layers of cloth and pieces on the inside of the boat. Now, note on this 14, guys, the seat face is up higher. So when we go for wider boats or boats that are longer with more volume, the seat face comes up higher and higher to give you a little bit different perspective in the boat. So every model we have for pack boats, we have designed specific seats for. So this top guy with the pack 12.6 and pack 13.6 have been very popular boats for us forever. The pack boats come standard with the cherry handles and thwarts. The carbon handles and thwarts are a $200 option. This is our Kevlar Fusion with the amber finish on the outside and the inside. Pack 12.6 is great for someone that may want to have a smaller person put a dog with them, fish tackle box, small child. This is a very popular boat for us. Now, why don't we, uh, are we ready, Meg? Okay, we're going to bounce back here. So, Matt, talk to us. Tell us what, what this is all about. Well, uh, we knew you had the boat show today, so the crew, we, uh, we want to surprise you with a boat here today. So uh, this one, the, me and the crew, we're calling Galaxy. So it's got uh, some blue and silver metal flake in there, some purples and blues and reds to try and give it that sort of night sky look. And I was surprised. So folks, normally these guys tell me what they're working on. So this is so cool. So talk to us about the bottom here. Uh, yeah, so we were, we were sort of trying some. We were really trying to give it that uh, galaxy look. So you can see we've got some, uh, some purple metal flake in there, some blue and silver to represent the stars. Uh, dark superior blues. We have some of the red from the Robin fade. We sort of wanted to try just a, a bunch of the stuff that we had at the factory while we were experimenting. Nice. This, this is super cool. So folks, this is another one that you can help us name. So it's a Cruiser 14.8. Right now, Matt's name is it for Galaxy. Now, on the standard metal flakes, we're doing $800 option. So, Matt, something like this is more creative. This would be a $1,200 option? Yeah, it'd, be a, it'd definitely be a little more. And everyone would be, you know, sort of unique. You know, it's hard to replicate it exactly every time. So, same with, like, Northern Lights. You know, there, there'd be slight variances in each boat, right? Yeah. yeah. Ab, guys, these boats are so freaking cool. These are over the top. So... I love paddling, and I want so many of these boats. <laughs> Let's put this one down on the floor over here. 
I want to show folks an um, option over here. So, Joe, I'm going to come behind you, and Matt, we're going to grab this baby. Sounds good. If you can go straight out, Matt, and I'll back it in. Yep. So this is an option. We had a customer who's looking at buying a boat right now, and he's actually thinking about buying a Carbon Fusion Prospector 14, but he wanted to know about the sliding seat setup. So let me show it to you. So on our pack boat models, we can put in what we call a sliding seat, which has a pin on the back. It's got an H channel on it. And you can see how it's got the matching bracket right here. So what this allows you to do is, first of all, when you lift this boat up without the seat in it, you wouldn't believe how light it is. But People that get the sliding seats in their pack boat are people that have a dog, people that have fish tackle equipment. When you see four pins showing, Terry sets these up to be at the balance point. So if you've got five pins showing, you're going to be slightly bow heavy. So if you wanted to, you can move it way forward and put the pin in. So this would be a good setup if you're putting a big backpack behind you. So people who want the ability to be able to take different loads, sometimes if you've got a big dog right in front of you, you'll be bow heavy with the normal pack boat configuration. So what you do in that situation is you pull the pin and you move the seat all the way back to the rear position. So it adds a lot of versatility to a pack boat. The Kiwaden 15 is a really good tripping boat. It's got a great setup to it. It's, it's a little bit straighter keeled in the back end than the Prospector, a little bit cleaner flowing design to it. People that own them absolutely love them. Lots of stability. So one of the things that we haven't talked about yet, and I think that I may have lost our DY. Here it is. So let me go over this quickly with you. Joe, do you want to come around this way? One of the things that people love most about our boats is the design. And we call this the DY square. And if you look at this, they're very rounded in the chine area and very consistently rounded from one end to the other. So it allows waves to roll underneath them with less effect of moving the boat around. Many boats in the market have a little bit flatter bottom with straighter sidewalls. Those boats get pushed more in wind and waves. The Kiwadens really roll beautifully, and the cruisers, too, have that same feel to them. It's amazing the size waves that you can go through with them. So, Joe, while it's set up like this, let's show them the, the Kiwaden 16 tandem here. Now, guys, this is the only tandem boat we do with the pack boats. Note how high, how big these seat bases are. Matt, this is quite a job to create this. Yeah, it was a real job, and uh, I, I won't deny that it's our, our one of our least favorite seats to build just because it's really deep in, in a lot of surface area. But uh, we don't build them too often, but uh, they, they are amazing and super comfortable. It's nice to be able to uh, paddle a tandem canoe like a kayak. Now, I know when we build the carbon seat bases, you've really developed the laminate for that particular part. Like, it's, it's amazing how many pieces you put in it. When I see them putting it together, I'm always amazed. Yeah, uh, you know, we'd like to just have one laminate for everything. That would make things a lot easier. But uh, depending on the size, as you can see, it's a really big seat base, so we have to put some reinforcements in some... Uh, some key areas just to make sure that uh, it's nice and strong for everybody. And uh, traditionally, when you've got bigger, flatter surfaces, it can make the part a little less rigid. So we just beep these seats up a little bit just to make sure everybody's uh, comfortable and, and uh, paddling safe. Now, this particular boat, the Kiwaden 16 pack, we do get people to order the center detachable canoe seat on it also with a detachable yoke. It's a really nice setup. We're not able to do a detachable seat on the bottom of this because of the shape of the model, but we've done at least half a dozen of them set up like this, detachable center seat if you do want to be able to use it solo. So 
so many different choices with the pack bolts, guys. So let's do this now. Let's go around the corner, Joe, and we're going to show the folks the kayaks, and we're definitely going to want the light for this one. Matt and Meg, do you want to move a couple of these cruisers sure out can, just yeah. so we have a little bit of room? So many of our dealers sell a lot of kayaks. We sell a lot of them up here, and we've got some really cool new colors this year. So the top Kawasa 12.6 LT up here, this has our moss green finish, which we're also doing on our canoe models now. All of our canoes are available in gel coat colors, the forest green, the red, the champagne, the moss green, and look how cool this looks with the carbon. Beautiful earth tone look. We've come up with a lot of these metal flake boats that are sparkly. But at the same time, we've got some really cool looking earth tone looks right now as well. Here is a moss green Saranac 14 and Kevlar Fusion. Again, a very beautiful look to it. And then the boat on the very bottom. This is one of our most popular kayaks now, Joe, and I'm going to pull it out for a sec. So this is the Saranac 15. It's in stone blue, one of our new gel coat colors. We came up with this last year, and we are selling more of these now. It's got the extended cockpit on it. So we're selling more of them in this configuration than we actually are with the smaller, tighter cockpit on it. And we're finding that people are really appreciating the spaciousness of it. The cockpit rim is a little bit over the deck height, so when the waves, the water splashes up, it really gets kicked off to the side. These carbon cockpit rims are, are really cool parts. Matt and his team have really worked hard to have a really cool look to these. So this is the low volume version. We do a deeper one as well. I'm super comfortable in this. So. All of our kayaks are available with these gel coat, either a single deck color like you see here, so the new stone blue, the new moss green, or take a look at this baby with what we call Firestorm. We do a lot of really nice color fades where we, we call this the DY swoosh right here. We, we try to have the gel match the line going up and down the boat. It's really super cool finish. And then let's look up here, guys. So, Matt, here's some more of the newly created babies you have. So this particular one, this sheen, this is actually a carbon cloth. Yep, so the, the red in this is actually woven right into the carbon fiber cloth. So this is just a clear finish on this boat. And uh, yeah, it's a really cool effect, actually. Usually outside, you look at it from one angle, it just looks like black carbon until you start walking around it and uh, the reflections of the red come through. Now, something else folks were doing this year, dealers that have sold their boats for a year, all of our carbon boats have a carbon interior on them now also. Super, super cool look. Now, we want to do this on the LT versions if we're doing this cloth. This is a $600 option. Yep. And it's available on the Adirondack LTs, the Kawasa LTs. When there's too many fittings and to move the cloth, or is it okay in those situations? Uh, yeah, it depends on the model. You know, if uh, just always realize as this fabric conforms, the more shapes, the more chance there is for slight distortions in the fabric that don't make it look completely straight, but it still looks pretty good. So we yeah. could do it. So what we're referring to, guys, is that on many of our models where the hatches are, there's more fittings. The cloth has to play a little bit more, so we may have to snip the cloth to make it fit, but it, it still looks fantastic. Oh, yeah, it's really cool, and uh, we can get this in other colors as well. Yeah. So let's take this uh, bottom boat, and let's put it right behind this so Joe can get a really good look at this baby. So this is an Adirondack 12LT in Kevlar Fusion. And Matt, you did a really creative spray on this one too. Do you want to tell the folks about this one? Because it looks different than that Cruiser 12A. Yeah, so this one's got uh, some real traditional heavy flake in it. It uh, looks really, really cool out in the sun. And uh, yeah, it's, 
it's hard to tell actually, but uh, if we look at the champagne here a bit as well, there is actually a purple pearl in the champagne as well to just match that purple deck on top of it. But uh, yeah, just out in the sunshine, these just look absolutely stunning when the sun hits them. I, uh, I guarantee if you've got one of these boats, you're going to have uh, lots of people coming to see it and uh, ask you all kinds of questions. Yeah, so this one, is this a multiple spray boat too, or is this just one super cool look? It's just a really super cool look, and uh, it's a couple of sprays, but uh, very unique effect. Looks really cool. Again, there's some other colors we could probably do this in as well. Okay, so this on the kayaks, it's a $600 option to get the decks with the, uh, the super cool new metal flake. Let's put this one back, and let's, uh, the one right above it, let's put, take this baby out. So I love the look of this one, Matt. This one's really cool. That this, if I'm getting a new kayak this year, if, if you guys will make one for me, this is the <laughs> deck color I want. This one's actually uh, really cool. When we uh, first started doing some of these metal flake jobs, we knew we really wanted to do a, a copper look. And uh, we did the burnt orange boat first. That was sort of our first attempt at copper, but it was really bright, but we all still really liked it. And believe it or not, this kayak here actually has the same metal flake in it as the orange canoe there does. It's just got a much different effect just by the different color that we've put in behind it. And it gives us a, a totally different look to the boat. Now, folks, we are wanting names for this, too. If you come up with a creative name for this look, right now we're calling it the car copper metal flake. And then the other kayak deck over here the purple metal flake deck. Scott wants to give away some swag packages. <laughs> Have we done any yet, Scott? I've done several, yeah. You've done several? Okay. One more for each of these. <laughs> All right, and then the top one, if someone has a neat name for this particular cloth. So on this one, we did the black on the bottom, and then that really cool red on the top of it. Beautiful, distinctive look. Anyone has some creative names, let us know. And Scott's in a very giving mood these days. <laughs> and again, let them know where you're from if you're tuning in. And uh, we'd love to hear where people are listening from. Okay, let's put this back. So, Joe, we just had someone ask about the kayaks and dry storage capabilities. So why don't we come over here for a sec? So we have hatch covers, guys. And we put automotive door gaskets on the inside of them and then there's solid bulkheads on the ends and we put a, I believe Matt we use plexus to seal them in nicely yep so lots of room our kayaks are known to have lots of storage capabilities for the shape of the boats because a lot of kayaks come to their widest point and curl back in David really flared them way out, so they're very easy to put a good amount of gear in. We're canoe trippers. We're not used to putting things into small compartments and so on. So these have very spacious feels to them. So when I think of the Swift kayaks, the Saranac 14 and 15, these aren't boats that I want to paddle five miles offshore on in five, ten-foot waves. These are great coastal tripping boats, Georgian Bay, Long Island Sound, Cape Cod, the coast of Maine. Now, let's look in the back here, Joe. This is what blows people away. So typically, the front hatch has about a third the storage capabilities of the back. So the bulkhead is right behind the seat. It's right in front of the paddle rest right here. So from there to here, there's an incredible amount of storage space. So when I have kayak tripped in the past, I like putting my sleeping pad, my personal gear in here. In the front of the boat, I typically put my tent, my thermorest sleeping pad, and then put cooking gear and other things. And you can balance them out really nicely. Now, no hatch is 100% watertight, but you can, when you put these on properly, you can get a really nice seal on them. So putting this down, tighten the strap a little bit more. I push down hard. I can tighten it a little more. When 
you'll know that when you open this up, like I can feel the seal breaking. I know that I've got a really good seal on it. Some other features on our kayaks is we, they all have stainless steel security bars on them. And many of the models we build with an overlapping seam, like this right here, the Saranac 15 we do, all the Adirondacks are built that way. Absolutely beautiful. So can we go out on the deck for a minute? I know the light isn't as good. Maybe we can, Matt, can you bring this with us? Sure can. Because I want to show the folks. How are we for time, Scott? 1.30. Excellent. Anyone else have questions? Let us know. So, I wanted to show a couple things here. And that the light may not be great for this. So, Matt, if, if Let's see if, yeah, that's not bad. There's the stone blue on a Prospector 15 with the aluminum trim. Kind of a cool look to it. And then, Matt, let's come down this way. Here is a Prospector 14 pack right here. This has the moss green finish on it. This particular one has the universal mount package, and it's got the carbon foot bar with the interior gel coat on it. Super cool look. And then look on the bottom, guys. There is a stone blue Prospector 14 carbon Kevlar trim, multi-height seat system with a carbon foot bar. These new colors are going to be great for uh, not showing scratches so much. It's going to be similar to our champagne. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, and you can see we put color skid plates on them. Now, these aren't the 100% color of it. Matt mixed these, but we'll show you inside. And, Joe, let's just show people this boat. This is a Northern Prospector 16 with vinyl trim with a heavy-duty polyethylene end caps. This is a little bit more of a price point boat that we build with a super, super durable trim system and finish. So this is available from us. We can build boats like that. Uh, but we tend to really like to feature the absolute beauties on days like this. <laughs> so why don't we come back in? Is Mike close by? Maybe, maybe not. So guys, we have, Matt runs the composite factory with Jillian, and they're so creative. I'm so proud of what they've done. They've been absolutely killing it. So we also have a wood shop that we build a lot of our canoe parts with. We build the, um, our handles, our thwarts, our yokes. We've got a really cool CNC machine that absolutely builds these beautiful stuff. And Mike Ramsey, who is Mr. Badger, is runs the wood shop factory. All right, we've got a good team sure? here. So we're going to switch the mic up here. And Mike's going to quickly take you through some of the really cool stuff. Start with this, Mike. Tell people what you're capable of doing on a custom paddle. So uh, everybody's aware that you can just uh, buy a standard Badger paddle in, in, uh, in stock in cherry or sassafras or walnut. But a lot of people want to get something custom. So that's a custom laser engraved paddle that we did for, for Bill in memory of his mom. Um, we also have uh, forest edition paddles and, and, uh, and the ability to, to make an actual custom paddle with a custom grip and a custom blade if you have your dad's paddle that you want to duplicate and, and hang his old paddle on the wall, we can do that as well. So um, a lot of customization options with the paddles. We can talk about them in a big video later because there's lots of stuff that we've done for folks. So tell people what this paddle's all about because that's my paddle. So this is actually a paddle, that it, the, the new version of this paddle. This is an older paddle and it's a little bit stretched out from what we make now, but this is a, this is a bonga. Um, this is a longer version of a bonga. It's not exactly what a bonga looks at anymore, but that's our wider uh, blade for rivers, shallow water, and pushing a lot of water. Um, this is a bit worn off. Bill uses the paddle a lot, but that's the Swift Tree brand that we, that we brand, branded into, into that paddle for Bill. 
Awesome. Guys, I love these paddles. They've got a really nice feel. Mike foils them beautifully on the ends and the, the really thickens them up on the bottom. And I find doing a C stroke, I can just slide the paddle back up to the water nicely or doing a J stroke. They just have an absolutely beautiful feel to them. And Mike, how many paddles have you made over the years? I figure myself I've built well over 10,000 paddles just myself. And then now we've got a crew that works on them at, at, the, at the Swift Wood Shop. So, so there's probably been about 15 to 20,000 Badger paddles built at nice. this point in time. A lot of firewood. Yeah, well, we do get a lot of firewood. <laughs> bags and bags of it at the wood so shop. We're going to start selling that. Yeah, why don't you show the folks some of the, the other stuff we do, and then we've got some other questions for Matt here. So I don't need to say too much about the sassafras because Bill and Matt have done a pretty good job of explaining the weight of it and, and the durability and the flexibility. That's Another so cool thing, but just to show you, there's a cherry yolk and there's a sassafras yolk, just to give you an idea of the difference of the grain, what the, what the yolks look like. Sassafras, the grain looks a lot like ash, um, but it's a darker, kind of a more caramel color. And these are our adjustable, removable yolks. So if you have a pack boat or a solo canoe or a combi and it has inserts, one of these three adjustable, removable yolks can be bought stock from us and shipped to you. So previously you would have had to take some measurements, send your boat in, get a yoke custom made for your boat. Now, if you're far away and you're unable to do that, we can just, you can just order one, have a ship, and it fits a range of boats. So you just have to buy the small, medium, or large corresponding to the model of your boat. And that's a stock item that's available from Swift now, making it a bit easier to get yourself a, a yoke for your boat. Aside from, cool. Good? Yep. Guys, Mike is a master creator, and he and his wife together do a bunch of custom artwork. So they did this paddle for my mom. Absolutely beautiful. My mom we call, call Skinny. So you guys want some custom stuff done, give us a shout. We can do something creative for you. Thanks, Mike. Welcome. So I'm going to go over a couple other things now. Can we grab the mic back, Mike? I guess. Mike for Mike. Yes. Here you go. Okay, Samantha from Racket River Outfitters has a great question. And that is, Matt, how durable are these detachable seats and do people need to take special care of them? Um really they're they're really durable other than, you know, your your traditional it is wood if you have the wood option, you know. Over time you may want to put some oil on it just to seal them up again, but other than that you should expect the same durability from our removable parts as you would our fixed seats. Now, that is one really good point, is that it's really good, like the, the yolks, it's good to periodically put some yep. oil finish on them, the ends of the seats with all this detachable hardware. So Matt, we didn't talk about that sound. What is, can you tell the folks what, what is that sound? Yeah, so that sound is, uh, there's actually a rare earth magnet that's inside of the pod and one inside the seat. And uh, we didn't want to have too many fasteners on any of our removable seats. So our idea being we could get away with two fasteners if we had uh, some magnets on the back because we wanted to make sure it was held in position during transportation. So guys, we are in the question answer period right now. So if you have other questions, let us know. And uh, we had a, a couple other really good ones. And Matt, I hit you with this one. Paul Leapington is wondering, is it realistic to fit a sailing kit and a lee board to the side of a Prospector 15? Yeah, I mean, if that's an option you want to go down, we have seen other customers do it. Uh, typically, we don't install that at the factory, but if that's something you wanted in your boat and you're willing to install it yourself, that's definitely something you could put on your boat. Yeah. Okay, and Samantha Racket River Outfitters had a follow-up question. All of the foot braces, our carbon foot bars, are easily adjustable lengthwise. If someone wants it further forward, further back, the kayak foot braces, it's a little bit more difficult to do so. But with the carbon foot bar, absolute, it's easy. So 
We just got an order for a key weighing 15 for someone six foot five. So we're going to make sure that we move the seat a little bit further forward on that one. Now we had, uh, let me get the fellow's name on this one. Okay. Um, we had a customer actually that wanted us to describe the differences between the Prospector 14 pack and the Prospector 14 solo. So literally, Matt, when we build these boats, the Prospector 14 pack and the Prospector 14 Solo come out of the same mold. Yeah, the, the hull itself is, they're identical Prospector 14s. Uh, the difference is mainly the components that you get inside. So with the pack boat, we've developed a height seat for it that's really cool. It's really comfortable. We sell them a lot to larger paddlers or people that can't kneel anymore. Let's pull this one out. We'll put it right here, Matt. Sounds good. So with the canoe version, and we didn't go over this in great detail, so let's do it now. So this baby right here has the multi-height seat system. So when we build the canoe version of the Prospector 14, we of course do a rib that's wide enough for the seat structure and the solos. The solo canoe costs a bit more than the pack version. It's the laminate structure the side pods and so on, we do are a little bit different. And guys, look at the shape of the side pod here. So this is really elaborate. Matt and Terry really worked hard to create this really super cool look. Now, the multi-height pods, the upper position on this is your normal height where we keep about nine inches off the floor of the boat for people to comfortably sit or to put their knees under if they want to kneel. So I'm going to pop this out in the lower seat position and this quickly, and Matt, this is one of the reasons why you wanted to develop a system with the easy hardware. It's so easy to change. Exactly. We just want it to be easy and fast. Everyone wants fast these days. You know, no one wants to be fiddling around with fasteners and wrenches. So uh, it had to be toolless and fast. Now there's a seat called the GCI sit backer, which you can strap right around to the seat that many people get for the lower position here. Um, something that you, everyone needs to know there. I've had two fellows, two 350, 400 pound guys that got that seat and just said it didn't have enough support and they wish they just got the 14 foot pack. We have another fellow, Mike Arnoff from, uh, he lives in Virginia in the summer and then in the winter he lives in Florida. He's an ACA instructor. He ordered the pack version, but he's a hardcore canoeist. And the reason is, is he can't kneel anymore. He can only sit and he just wanted the most comfortable seating system that he could get. And guys, that's something I need to emphasize again. Our pack boat seating system is so comfortable. It, it's, you can sit in it for hours. You got to get out every now and then to go to the bathroom, but we wanted to have a seat system that you'd never had the feeling of, oh, this thing's killing me. I got to get the heck out of it. Okay, how about a technical question, Matt? So, um, Aaron Layton from New Hampshire is looking to order a Prospector 14 pack. He wants help deciding between the carbon fusion and the expedition carbon laminate. Okay, so uh, we, we touched on it briefly a little bit earlier. So uh, our carbon fusion laminate is going to be a little bit lighter, but uh, it's not going to be as durable as the Expedition Carbon. So Aaron, you need to ask yourself what kind of paddling you plan on doing. If you plan on there being a lot of obstacles and stuff like that, I would highly recommend that you get the Expedition Carbon. But you know, if you're looking for the a, a little bit lighter for those long portages and stuff like that, then you're going to want to get the, the Expedition Carbon. And then uh, I see Aaron also wanted to know if he should get uh, an interior gel. And again, like uh, an interior gel is always a great option. It's going to make your boat so much easier to clean. It's going to add a little bit of weight, but it's going to make your boat more durable and looking new for as long as possible. On a Prospector 14 pack, how much weight do you think it would add? Oh, I would say less than half a pound more than likely. So it's, it's very minimal for the gain that you're getting from it, right? Um, Joe, we had a customer ask if we could show an amber finish with the champagne bottom. So maybe you could show this one run up and down it. So that's the amber finish. 
in Kevlar Fusion with a two-tone bottom on it. The amber has an absolutely killer look to it. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, someone just, uh, Steve Bentley, just asked if we could review the ordering process for a canoe. So the best way to do it, guys, is to call us up. You can also email Brandon at swift at swiftcanoe.com, and he can set up a time to have a private consult with you on the phone. And this is whether you're ordering it through one of our stores or through a dealer. Um, we also have shipments going in the spring to UK and Australia. We have more shipments going. And a private consult is the best way if you know specifically what you want. If you're from Ontario, we're inviting everybody to come up and see this incredible collection of boats over the next month at our Gravenhurst store on Highway 11. Absolutely stunning to come see all these. You bet. I need to warn you, though, guys, if you come and visit the showroom now, you're going to want to order more than one boat. And we, we really, we are back ordered now till June, where our production's really getting booked, but we can slide orders in. And I'd say if you definitely want an order by spring, we can fit one in in April or May right now. We really need to know soon. So I strongly encourage you, email Brandon, call him at the 800 number. If you want to consult with me, I'm happy to. I've got a very easy email address, bill.swift at swiftcanoe.com. I'm happy to set up a time to talk to you on the phone. And uh, Brandon ran our Algonquin Test Paddling Center for a year. He spent a lot of time with people on the water trying different boats out. Diane's been doing it for years as well. so. Whatever Swift staff can really help you through it. And what we'll do is we'll spec out a boat for you, work with you on what you want. We'll send you back an order sheet for you to confirm. And then what we do and our dealers do is take a 50% deposit and then have you pay the balance when you pick the boat up. Okay, Joe Tobin wanted to know, compare the Prospector 17 and Kiwaden 18.6. So... The Kiwaden 18.6 is an asymmetrical boat. It's longer and sleeker in the front. There's a little bit more rocker in the front. It's straighter keeled in the back end. It's a great family tripping boat if you really want to cover ground on a trip. The Prospector 17 is a symmetrical canoe. It has an equal amount of rocker at each end. And let's show it over here for a sec, Joe. And I'm, thank you, Joe, for asking this question. Everybody has a prospector. Our particular prospector 16 and 17 are actually more like chestnut cruisers. They're a little bit sleeker. They're a little bit more efficient in the water. They really paddle nicely. These are incredible flat water tripping canoes. Algonquin Park, Killarney, Tomogamy. Um, if you're loading up with a bunch of kids and you want something a little bit shorter and more versatile, the Prospector 17 is a great boat for you. And if you really want more consult than that, so email Brandon or myself. We'll set up a, a time to talk to you on the phone. And, Joe, I'm just going to come back and get the other questions we may have here. So um, here's a good one. So... Michael Friedman from Massachusetts, he uh, owns one of our boats, and I believe he's getting a Prospector Combi also. He wants to know a series of things, Matt. So yeah. what Matt and I are going to do is we're going to have another show at our factory a month or so from now. And it's going to be, we're going to go over all the technical aspects of building our boats. And many people ask us, do I get the Kevlar Fusion? Do I get the Carbon Fusion? The Expedition Carbon looks so cool. It really is an individual thing. And if we found that we tell you what durability each ones we have, it's again, as I said at the beginning of the show, it's really pertinent to the paddler. 
and the particular way they like to paddle. So right now we can say he wanted to know about the strength and rigidity and the flexibility versus weight to the different laminates. And one thing that we should point out, we have, we are at the very beginning, the origins of our company is we are a canoe rental operation. So every year we build 100 or so boats in the Algonquin Outfitters rental fleet. And Matt, we've just experimented so much over the years. Yeah, it's been great. I mean, we do all kinds of testing at the factory with force gauges and stuff like that. But we find the real world data that we get from our rental fleets to be some of the best. Things that we oversaw in the production process shows its face in all the rental boats. And then it's really easiest for us to see where our failure points are, where we need to improve, where we can lighten things up. So the rental fleet's just been an asset for us as far as R&D goes and figuring out what we need to work on. And it's, yeah. it's not just the hull. It, for example, on the, the wood yokes, all the ones in the aluminum trim and carbon Kevlar trim, we put in with the metal backing bracket, yep. which is strictly right from Algonquin Outfitters. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we, we find all these little tricks that, uh, you know, maybe on the typical customer boat might not wear out. Uh, a customer tends to take a little more care of their boat. A rental boat tends to be like a rental car. You know, they, they get beat on quite a bit. So we, we really see the failures in the rental boats. And, and you know, even if our customers aren't going to be that rigorous with uh, their boats, we try and make those improvements so that they want to be that rough on their boats. They, they could be. Yeah. So, Scott, we've given some swag away. We've given off plenty. We're good. <laughs> Have we? Are there some names you want to share with us? Oh, let's see. Here we go. Do you want to bring your mic over to Scott for a sec? Thanks, Sarah. I'll just hold it for here. But uh, we've got a bunch. So, uh, Judy Kirk, uh, I believe, gave us some uh, suggestions for kayak colors. Uh, who else? Sarah Baker, um, Bianca Bocher, Betcher, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, um, Angela Ward as well, and I think I have a few more coming in. So I told everyone who won to email us. Uh, pretty much everyone emailed me in real time while we were talking. Uh, I think a few of you might have won and have not emailed me yet, so <laughs> check the comments. If I responded to you with my email address, please send me something right away, and uh, we'll send you some sweet stuff in the mail. Were some of our dealers checked in? Uh, yeah, Rutabaga, I believe, was watching. Adirondack Lakes and Trails uh, commented a bunch. Uh, it's honestly hard to keep up because we've had viewers and comments just streaming in. There's 550 comments right now. So, so um, let's blame Matt for that with all these <laughs> yeah. beautiful creations. Yeah, it's all your fault, had, Matt. Yeah. <laughs> so what time do we have now? Uh, 1.53. 1.53. Okay, we got five minutes, guys. So a couple other things. Once COVID hit, people didn't come and test paddle as much anymore. So we've gotten really good at matching people up with a boat that best suits their needs without a test paddle. So we have many folks that order our boat sight unseen. We ship them all across Canada, all across the US. And as many folks know, we have a new dealer, Canoe Shops UK and Great Britain that's selling our boats. They got one container and they're starting to put orders together for a second. And with those guys in Britain, we're doing a custom prospector with a guy that has a severe disability. He wants what's called a command stand that Yak Attack makes to aid him in getting in and out of the boat that folds down. We have, we, so we do do some custom things for people from time to time. We really, especially someone with a disability, we'd like to help them out as best we can. We've got a distributor in Australia that's got another container of boats coming, and Travis and Dan have been posting great videos. They've been using their boats like crazy. You guys who watch our videos may remember the Raven Blue one with the yellow bottom with the Paddle Portage logo on the bottom. Ooh la la, that's Daniel's boat. And uh, so we've been doing more and more really cool custom packages for boats. And, Matt, what, what does the shop think? Do you guys, are you into this when people order these things? Yeah, it's, you know, typically, you know, sometimes, you, you know, you do a job over and over again. Sometimes, you know, some of the, the laminates become very common for us. So it was really cool to experiment this year. And it was really nice to see every time we do a metal flake job, the first thing the next day when the boat would come out of the mold, 
Everyone would be running into the room to check out this new really cool paint job. It's just cool to see everyone's face and everyone, you know, has suggestions for different colors and paint jobs and things that we could do. And really with Swift Canoe, like the, the possibilities are endless for us. And it's just cool that now we can kind of offer you something very unique, you know, so that, you know, your boat is unique to you. There's so many different options, right? And it's really cool to see. Now, we've had, I've been talking to a bunch of people that work in the composites industry. And I asked them, you know, we told them we're doing our videos that are coming up. So our videos are going to start rolling out in the next week or so. Our combi canoe, tandem canoe, solo, pack boat, kayak video. We're going to do a technology video. Yep. And what they tell me is they visit composite factories all over North America is they can't believe how clean our shop is and how good the air quality is. And a big part of that is that we're built, even our small parts, with resin infusion. Everything is cured inside undercover. There's not styrene that's coming out yeah. into the worker's face. It's an extremely clean place. Yep. And it's hence, it's very, it's cleaner for the environment. There's less fumes that are going out into the yep. environment. So, Matt, the, the workplace is super cool. Oh, yeah. Well, like I said, we like to keep it clean there because, you know, contamination and stuff like that is a big part of composites. So the cleaner you keep your shop, the less you have to worry about things like that. And uh, we, uh, we supply all our employees with PPEs and we use vacuum dust extractors for all our sanding. It's made a huge improvement over the years with air quality and just keeping employees to just being in a better environment is just great for everybody. Nice. So, Matt, you met your wife at our factory. Yeah, I did. Uh, my, my wife was a laminator when I first started at Swift Canoe and Kayak, and uh, we really hit it off, and uh, we've been together ever since. So, Joe, why don't we give a quick Meg wave? She's been helping <laughs> us out today. <laughs> Absolute wonderful spirit to have around. So, Scott, do we have anything else we want to add? No, we're, we're good. Okay, well, thank you, folks, for all tuning in again. If you want to contact Brandon, swift at swiftcanoe.com. Call our 800 number also. You can book a consult with Diane or Brandon. And I would be happy to consult with you as well. Bill.swift at swiftcanoe.com. And look at this showroom, folks. Perhaps your hardest decision to make is going to be what look and finish you want. And Matt... Thank you for these beautiful creations from paddlers across the world. You're creating some beautiful boats. We have an amazing team. Yeah, and thank you to the team, Jillian, Terry, Susan, everybody. Thank you for creating all these beautiful canoes and kayaks. Cheers, folks.